I appreciate you being here. But we had others signed up, so I was trying to give a little bit of time just in case people are running behind. Uh, so first of all, I want to uh, welcome you. Thank you for being here tonight. I'm Chris Delahanty. I'm the Executive Director for Capital Programs and Technology for the District. And tonight, we are following up uh, on our first uh, meeting that we had for the Delmar Hills uh, Academy Modernization in June, which we held over Zoom. And here's our second meeting where we're going to ask for some more input from the community. We've been fortunate to get some input from our staff and our students at the end of last school year, and we'll be circling back with staff as well coming up. And uh, at this, this meeting, we are excited to get some specific input based on some of the items we looked at last time and some of the investigation and work that our architects have been able to do over the course of the summer. And so um, with that, I'm going to introduce our architects from Lion Aukus. We have uh, Steve Kendrick and Dan Ivan, and they will be uh, taking us from here. So I'll step over. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. It's great to be back in person this time. <laughs> so what we wanted to do is we wanted to walk you through a little bit of where we've been, um, things that we found in the last few months, uh, doing research on the building and getting more plans out of archives and things like that. Uh, do a little bit of technical code research and things like that, and it's sort of changed um, some of our must-do things that we'll get to. But if you remember back in our um, first meeting, we, we had four questions that we asked. You know, how would you envision a welcoming entry at Del Mar Hills improvements to the front office? And without going into all the responses, the top three were open, airy, accessible, welcoming, um, safe and secure, and better pick up and drop off. And then we asked, what would an indoor-outdoor connections look like from the outdoor learning? And some of the key words there that came out of it were, uh, it was important to have indoor-outdoor learning, uh, covered outdoor spaces uh, beyond just kind of the trellis area, which is, it provides some shade, but not really any weather protection. And then uh, landscape improvements. And then the last of the two questions, Um, the improvements to the fields and the play areas, should, what should, should we consider? Uh, to eliminate the gopher holes, that came through pretty clear <laughs> from everybody. Uh, rehabilitate the natural grass and then a new play structure. And then are there other air items you would like us to see considered? One was acoustical upgrades uh, between the classrooms, uh, the environment inside the building, updated learning spaces, and better wayfinding. Um, so with that, we started looking at um, so what we've done since June, since we've met, was we've had some workshops and meetings with the district, with the staff, uh, and with students um, before they got out of school. And then, so here we are tonight at community meeting number two. So after this, we'll go into more programming and design refinement, come back to the community with what, you know, further design information and get your last input before we take it to the board. And the goal is to take it to the board at the end of October. So we talked about what, digging out old plans. This is a vintage 1972. Um, so you can see the school was actually much smaller. It was It was intended to be built in two phases. So this was the first phase. Um, and then Dan will get that. This is the second phase. And then what it looks like now, um, there were some, and you'll see some of these things that we have on here. Back a little bit, one more. Um, some of these you can see as the plan changes of when the reloads were added and things like that. So, and we can kind of, we know from these numbers here with the state architect when actually those, the dates that those things were all installed. So then um, our building here where we are tonight was added in 2004, 2004. So you can see um, a little bit of site work was done to get access down the, the long sidewalk that walks behind the building here. That was the accessible path to get down to the campus. So um, you can note with all the topography we have coming down from Mango down to the campus. Um, it's something that we really need to be aware of and pay attention to as we move forward with uh, the, the renovation work that we're proposing. So this is our existing site plan, uh, just an aerial of it so you can kind of get oriented. Uh, we're obviously right in here. And then as you can tell, this is pretty current because we have all the easy ups in the field yeah. from the past year. 
So what that did was when we went through and, and started looking at the plans, um, and one of the things that we have to do when we're doing a major renovation like this to a building is we have to go through and look at how does it stack up with our current building codes. So we st we're starting with a building that's almost 50 years old um, and codes have changed considerably since then. Uh, the biggest changes we see in codes is every time we have an earthquake in California, our building code radically changes. So how many have we had since 1972? I can think of three major ones that I've lived through. So <laughs> anyway, so what happened was um, we also have to justify the amount of square footage that actually is built uh, with the fire codes. So what we found is the existing building with its physical size today, we could not build a building that size today without having fire sprinklers in it. So this building does have sprinklers, um, but so that's one thing that we that jumped to the top of our must-do list. With that, it's fire sprinklers going too technical. It adds more weight to the building and also replacing the, the HVAC units on the roof. The newer units, because of the energy codes, inherently way more so we're adding more weight to the, the building which then increases the amount of forces that happen if there's a seismic event so we have to go through and do a seismic analysis and Chris this is just something that has come out in, from DSA and since April that they're really enforcing anytime we're touching an existing building we have to go through and do an, an analysis of the structure so we we're going down that path, but DSA is enforcing something a little bit more elaborate than what we had originally envisioned. So we're going through that process right now. Um, accessibility, I talked about the grade change coming down from Mango to the site. We're fairly certain DSA is going to make us address that to get people to the front door and not go around, come down on the hard court behind the primary side of the building. Uh, and then uh, obviously security. For the infrastructure, uh, when we start looking at the interiors, we talked about the HVAC being replaced uh, just at the end of its life and it just, you know, we're doing more uh, newer, more efficient units. But with that also comes new lighting. And so as soon as we start touching the ceilings on the inside, it just makes sense to, to upgrade the lighting to the LED and much more energy efficient uh, lighting. And then looking at the technology, where do we have gaps in the technology to the classrooms and things like that and get that upgraded as well. Uh, campus access, with the ex accessing the site and everything, we know that uh, CDE, the California Department of Education, will look at how the drop-off occurs on campus. And right now, you know, there's a long queue that comes in. Um, there's only really technically one place that you can drop off children. And this for one car is about all you can get. So we'll have a, a little exercise. We'll, let you go through and so you can sort of play with the site plan that, that, that we worked out, but it will also show you sort of what we came up with as a possible solution for that. And then uh, classroom upgrades, we talked about here, acoustically uh, upgrade those, but also we think there's a way to create, actually we're creating more teaching space in, in the building within the existing uh, footprint. Uh, we think we found a way to do that. And then, uh, one of the things that came up, or admin upgrades, we're going to disrupt your life, Andrea. That's okay. <laughs> no, I'm okay with that. <laughs> um, and, w and w so one of the things that we're looking at there is, you know, we have the nurse's station as a way to make the nurse's station up closer to the front. So if there's a ill child or something, they can get access to the exterior without the parents having to take them back through the lobby. So give them a little bit of uh, flexibility there. And then uh, adding a server that's coming with the district, Chris was at. Do we know the timing on that? Or well, and we are looking at service? a combination of items with us having the uh, the central kitchen coming with Pacific Sky, and then with the fact that uh, we're looking at uh, greater likelihood of providing meals and potentially providing how how, how the state is um, adding potential requirements. Okay. We want to make sure that we can serve food and um, move make improvements and move forward with that. Especially the central kitchen, because if we have a central kitchen and we're, we're making our own food, there is the ability to um, serve that food and, and make it based on what that central kitchen right. is. So if we're spending all this money on the campus now, let's get that infrastructure set up for it. So then our should-do list wound up being uh, adding the daylighting to the classrooms, 
uh, upgrading the indoor outdoor learning spaces, the sort of shared spaces, but it's creating a new campus entry. And really, since we're limited to the amount of space we have really between the building and the driveway, it's really creating more of an identity of where the entry actually is on the building. Um, so that, and then reconfigure the parking, which you'll see in your the exercise we're going to have you go through. Uh, renovate the exterior play areas, uh, replace some of the aging play structures, and then uh, fixing the field. And then uh, we're going to get more hard court service back when the portables get removed. So how do we how do we work with that as well? Um, then the nice to do was increase the energy efficiency of the building just in the, the building walls or the envelope as we call it, uh, beyond what's required by code, uh, create new outdoor learning spaces, um, totally renovate the field and upgrade the field so there would be a reconfiguration and everything. And then uh, renovate the a student staff in the PAC restroom. So I don't know if you've ever been in here when someone's in the restroom, it's acoustically, it's not really separated from the space. Um, add a running track on the field was one of the things that was on the nice to do list and then add operable windows which I don't know if I should say it. we're hopeful we can do that because of an outcome of upgrading the seismic the seismic uh, resisting force of in the structure so we're hoping that by doing that we can open up some openings in the, in the existing concrete panels so it's kind of a it's kind of a if this that happens and we have to do this and then we have to do this and then by the time you get down with the have tos go oh. adding an operable window is really not that big of a deal anymore it's kind of an incremental change rather than a you know a blue sky idea yeah but we were, we didn't want that the, we didn't want that to drive the reason we had to upgrade this the structure so so where are we heading that was our, our exercise. Um, I don't know, you can maybe put a couple people at tables. So what we looked at is you'll, you'll get two sheets of paper. One is this, has this image on it, and another one is the site plan that we would propose. And what we're looking at is you can physically get uh, 38, or actually 30, 38 cars stacked tight all the way coming down from Mango in the existing parking lot. But according to CTA, CTE and where that access is, we really only have one space that stops at a curb before the slope, you start going up and the slope technically is too steep. So we looked at how, to, how can we increase the queuing or the, the number of blue cars, if you will, along the site here um, and still keep the same amount of queuing and ease traffic in this area. So that would be the second sheet that we would wind up looking at. Do you want to look at that now, Dan? So I can yeah, so I'm just give you a little um, pre preview of that. So this is what we had proposed. And basically, it's the telephone pole and the fire hydrant that sit right in here. Is if we take some of the parking out along the side here, is to create a new aisle that comes in on that side. So then you can come around. And then once you come down, take the parking out to the middle here, as you come around, it creates what we call free lane. So um, this is your NASCAR pit stop all lined up in the pits, and this is the cars that get the pass pull out. So you don't have to wait for the person in front of you to move, in other words. So if you have someone that's taking a little more time dropping off, you can still pull out and pass and still get up the mango to go out. So it creates that, just that little change creates a big, um, change in the flow of traffic on site. And then to get the number of parking spaces back that we had, we actually wound up with a few more. Um, keep this angled parking. So this would be for staff. So they get there before the queues show up. So their cars are parked, they're not going anywhere. And then we also have some visitor spaces and other staff parking back here. So we actually increased the parking from I think 38 to 45, is that? From 40 to 45. 40 to 45. So what we'd like you to do is, we've got some markers and uh, the site plans, and if you can just take a look at it, and if there's if you see something that we don't, some comments, because 
you're driving this every day and we're not. If you see things and how that, Andrea, and if you see how things function from your point of view, from a supervising it, um, we'd love to have those thoughts. And so if you can just feel free to write on it, write your comments on the white space on the bottom, um, that would be most helpful to us of getting your feedback. And it, we also have another audience participation piece after this. So um, let's, take, let's take maybe five or 10 minutes to, to go over this and Dan and I will walk around and, and answer any questions that you might have. And could I ask that, I think there's two main things. One, could you, could you note things that you see that are positive maybe of this? And then if you see any questions or things that you think could be improved, or maybe you think there's a total different route we should take, we would be very interested in that too. So I think looking at both, what, what looks like it might work with this, what are things that you see may need some change or doesn't work, so that we kind of get a little bit of the pro and a little bit of the improvement that we can get out yeah. of it. And that's why we've given both uh, design, both uh, like what it currently is and what may be, because you might see something that, oh, actually you should think of this. And so we're kind of interested in hearing from you yeah. on both ends of that. Before and after, okay. Yeah. Or what could be after? I'll do it on one or spread out. It doesn't. It, however, you guys however feel you want to work. <laughs> or you feel comfortable, and you will not hurt our feelings. <laughs> well, I'm curious. We can talk about feminists. So I'm curious to hear from someone who's done this. Because mm -hmm. yeah. we walk, so my kids come down. Yeah, we don't. Well, you come down from the yeah, we walked down the ramp by the Boys and Girls Club, so I'm, I'm, I feel a little bit uh, weird uh, commenting on it because I don't participate in it too much. I know the staff will be thrilled to have more spaces, and this encroaching on the playground I think will be just fine since we're going to remove portables, um, and I think this is an additional walkway, is that correct? That's what we think we're going to have to wind up doing sure. to get for accessibility. Down from, down yeah. from Mango. This is where the ramp switches, and there's mm -hmm. a landing right there, so mm -hmm. the idea would be to tie into it, and then try to hit the middle of that landing of the stairs coming down. Okay. It's, it's to get the public to the front door without having to go through the school. Okay. Yeah. And the, right the blue so represents Shadefield, is that what I'm saying? Or is proposed that... Shadefield. Oh, okay. okay. So in the meeting number one, I noticed that you've taken out a lot of the, the walls inside the main building, which we're not talking about yet, I get that. But if you take away the portables, where are those spaces going to be? Because they clearly don't fit in the main building currently. Um, so that's my number one question. And I recognize you're going to talk about that at some point, but I'm a little bit leery about losing the portable spaces. I mean, you've got some offices in there. You've got um, like PTA storage used to be in there before the Heights joined us. Mm -hmm. And I don't see additional space being allocated yet. So I'm, I'm quite concerned about that. Um, there's also a perception that we would be permanently coming down to a capacity of 280 um, instead of the original 360 as the building was built. I have serious problems with that. Um, so obviously you're going to talk about that in the future. Um, but those are the initial questions with, yeah, yeah, we'll just take out the portables. Well, well, the one that's here, is that being used for music or music now in the pack? Is that the right? Music is now in the pack. Okay. Yes. And then these and ones are all heights of hills and these the, ones are heights of hills. They the, are. Um, the, P, the PE. So this mm -hmm. one is the PE office. Yes. And then there are two classrooms yeah. and then four classrooms. Mm -hmm. And then one of the things that had been su suggested was to add on to the pack to collect some of that office and classroom mm -hmm. and space, right. music room, specialty space, rather than just losing it all completely. Because one of the expectations is that we wouldn't, we would lose old yucky buildings that are long past their prime, but that the campus would not lose space, that that space would be made permanent. So for example, we don't want to lose our music room. We would like to actually use our stage as a stage on occasion, and where are those instruments going to go? Um, you know, the IT shed is over here. Mm -hmm. Where's that gonna be? Is, do we have a space for that? Is it just getting moved to PHR or what? Um, so that that's where most of my questions come at right now. Because yeah, we get all this great, Laptop space, that's fantastic. 
but what are we really losing? So, well, I know I can't speak to the entire board, but the PTA has been just fine with the, just having a storage unit, and we were kind of like crammed into a storage unit in P3 previously. So yes, it'd be nice to have our own building, but we can <coughs> pivot, and um, I think that's that's been okay so far. And, and, I have a good question about the tech stuff. Like, where's all that going to live? Yeah, and that's fine. It's just that's that that's, one, minor thing. that's just one so, of the rooms. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, just yeah. Um, I would say that. We do have a slide that talks a little bit about space. We can kind of get to that with there. Um, okay. I can tell you that tech hasn't been on the site for since before COVID. We've oh. actually moved mm -hmm. to okay. um, the MOF uh, offices. So it's um, not actually been used for a couple of years, but we can kind of speak to that. If I could try and redirect us and kind of speak to this and I'd be happy to talk a little bit more about space re related. We actually do have a slide that kind of compares 2019, 20 pre COVID and some of the usage and then some of the things that we have in here and we can kind of discuss a little bit more in that mm -hmm. space. So I do drive this every day. Yeah. So I'm wondering like is the kinder still here and then how do the kinder guys like is someone walking them over? Um, That's what I was going to ask because it, this is the parent party, right? Mm -hmm. It'll be a, that will be a mix. Yeah, because okay. yeah, this this isn't enough space for all the staff. Yeah. Like, um, is this the, the AK space still? Yeah, yes. that's okay. Yeah. Um, well, and, and historically, kinder parents haven't done drop off very much. I mean, some do. But like when we, when our kids were kinder, we would just park up on the street yeah. and walk down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that, for me, wasn't really a kinder experience. But if we are going to be telling people, hey, there's there's parking all the way down here are they gonna come all the way down here find no parking and then let their kinder out and if you build it they will come yeah mm. if you tell them there's more parking and then you trap them at the end that's one of the great things about the current setup is that everybody knows there is zero parking in the lot <laughs> don't even try just get down drop off your kid and get out and if you want to stop and park don't. I think that we'll realize that there will still be zero parking for the most part. Right. Yeah. I think I mean, when we look at 40 to 45, yeah. the mm -hmm. difference is not dramatic. So I think that this is more about a rearrange and how it might impact the traffic flow than adding parking that would be, there might be a couple of guest spots, but in the morning it wouldn't be enough that you'd say, you know what, I'm going to chance it most likely. But it and does leave that opportunity for a few spots to open throughout the day if mm -hmm. parents are coming right. for meetings, yeah. things like so, that, and they don't have to park far away. But these are going to have to be like, you, you just basically need to make this further in. That's got to be staff only, you know, because if you tell people there might be parking back here and they're like, oh, I just need to drop off, you know, Billy's water bottle or whatever, if they, you know, they okay, don't see all the something open, open this will give them a chance to get out as opposed to getting in and mussing around in there. I think when we think practically, practical about it, that the staff will, this, they'll naturally, I think, fill mm -hmm. this space first, knowing that to leave this open, should we have any visitors, district staff, parents, yeah, but I do I, need to come for meetings. I, I just don't. I just don't see it. Littles. I just don't see it being something that we shouldn't. It needs to be designated because you get new staff who doesn't know. You get a, a sub who's just here for the day. They're running late. They grab the first spot, mm -hmm. and then you need to just make designate. This is staff talking. This is visitor. Well, what, is, what is it now? It's like visitor. Do you just visitor? You just like almost keep those. Exactly. Yeah. Whatever. However many turn in to be. Visitor, it's got to be those first ones where people can escape because those are going to be the people like just dropping off lunch. But to be a blue car, it has to be graded pretty flat for accessibility, is that right? Well, the, the, it's the, um, the, they can be, yeah, right. Okay, yeah. So pretty flat. Somewhat flat, but it also has to do with the sidewalk that's next to it. Okay. Because they can't, obviously, your kids have to get out on the right side of the car. Yeah. And I, again, mm -hmm. I walked my kindergartners, but if I drove, I think this would be nice as opposed to getting them here on a slope. You know, kid starts climbing on the fence here, they go up to play on the thing here, and this is nice and flat. You can see those little teeny tiny kinders a little bit better. So I think this is a, a big improvement. But again, I'm not the, the best voice of reason because we, we would go sprinting down the hill at unsafe speed. <laughs> <me>, so. <laughs> yeah. so is this, um, is it possible to, like, would it just be concrete or could it be? Landscape. This we we could landscape both of them, okay. it's, but the idea is it's a raised curb uh -huh. around it, not mm -hmm. just painted stripe. Okay. There's the fire hydrant and the 
powerful. Oh, okay. Yeah. The guy for the pocket got, yeah. powerful. We, we had some negotiation with the local authorities and the easements and stuff, but yeah. there's, there's opportunity over there. It's convincing them that it's in the best interest of the kids. Yeah, that's a good For us to be able to use it. But this one could be like a cool. Yeah, item. and so what, <laughs> what the Department of Ed has us, we have to physically separate um, drop off through lane and any vehicles that are parked. Okay. So that even even here, there would most likely need to be a railing to mm -hmm. physically keep parents from dropping here and, and cutting through. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Right. Yeah. Which I've done. <laughs> right. We have our we've had our drive through yeah, events no. and yeah, sometimes <laughs> teachers get trapped and we have to stop the trap. So there's no like little uh, yeah. gutter ball lane here. So that's there might be a way we can you know, look at this a little bit more and maybe some visitor spaces are here so that if they come in, they can park here and walk this way and not have to worry about backing out mm -hmm. if there's a queue there. And, yeah. they, and realize that queue happens, what, twice a day? Right. For right. 10 minutes, 15, 15 minutes, maybe? minutes about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and right now it's particularly heavy because we've got a lot more kids right. here. It's about what you see. Like during the normal yeah. normal year, it's this really a non-issue. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is actually one of the reasons we chose this school is I visited both schools randomly during 2.30 and whoever got out of their SUV parked right in the middle of the road made the decision for me. It's like, nope, nope, I'm going to the hills. <laughs> <laughs> We've got pickup down right now. It's going very mm -hmm. pretty good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I can vouch for the teachers guarding the top of the ramp. There, there are no nonsense. <laughs> I just tried to like step off the sidewalk and they're like, uh-uh, oh, they're doing a good job. This is great. I'm excited about it. So they hold the cue back. I'm not going to start driving the cue to the middle of the park. Get out of the parking lot for the pair of certificates. And this will be a renovated little toy, possibly? That's awesome. I'm going to videotape it with the four. It's pretty good. So right now, is is this overflow parking? No, it's no. Right now. You can't. So there's a gate. Right no, 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 there's a there's a gate. So on like event nights, we open the gate, and there is overflow parking on the blacktop, but it's not daily overflow parking. Right, right. So this same, same thing. Like yeah. it's an event. Right, it's rare when we do that, but yeah. Well, I think that's an awesome use of space. Mm -hmm. You know, when mm -hmm. needed, if it's mm -hmm. available. When we've had an open house in the past row, we, we've opened that up, but there still are very few cars that we can, you know, maybe 15, 20 cars that we can fit there, but yeah, and, it does and help. I would guess that that would be probably more like staff that has right. to be here. Right. Yeah. Then, yeah. So no, they've, done a, here and then, right. they've done a nice job showing, you know, what <laughs> playground areas would fit if yeah. when we did increase the parking structure or the parking spaces there. Yeah, and that's not a design per se as much as a showing space. Like right. you can fit two yeah, full basketball courts right. just to kind of help you mm -hmm. okay. visualize, Judge, you know. visualize that. Yeah. And that would be the same thing. There would be a gate there because that's going to mm -hmm. be right. fire truck access. Of course. Right. Yeah. Of course. And, and that's these are Tories. You're aware of this, right? I mean, they're like whales. They're super protected. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, just so you know, yeah. yeah, these are all Tory pines. Just, uh, it, could, it could cause you some headaches. <laughs> Even just trimming them can be a hassle. Yeah, well, there's also a, a storm drain. Or oh, is there? It's a storm Sorry. drain easement Sorry. that runs down. It's actually down. sewer easement. Sewer easement. Oh, boy, okay. I think so it works out for you. The Tory Pines are thriving on the sewer. All <laughs> 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 the circles of life, huh? Fertilizer. Yeah, there you go. It sounds like a Irma Bombay. Yeah. But it looks like, you know, there's lots of uh, aphids and utilized stuff. The apartment folks won't be happy that that's their little dog. Yeah, they, still, they still get some. Yeah, they'll still, they'll still yeah. be able to get down there. Yeah. And they can still ignore the rules and bring the dogs down on weekends. <laughs> yeah. they're, they're always at the top of the hill. They don't like all the way down. Yeah, very true. Very true. Skateboarders. Everybody's just yeah. looking for yeah. some grass. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit of green space. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I mean, it. it assuming all the other you know, concerns get taken care of, um, I mean, the, the, the proposed queue looks really good to me. Um, having some kind of, of um, just that, that crossing, either maybe have a protected crossing for people parking in the visitor spaces or something. Um, I was uh, working a poll at another elementary school and there were kids 
um, coming early to be the student safety patrol. And they had these big sticks that said stop. And so like p parents would park over at the YMCA across the street and the kids would have safety patrol and they would let everybody cross and then they'd let the cars go through again. And it's very, a very similar cue to this, except it was on a street with a cul-de-sac. Um, so that might be a, a during, like if there's visitor drop off, if there's visitor parking or something like that, making that possible, I don't know. But I still very strongly feel that all the visitor parking needs to be visible. Once you come into the queue and you kind of see how long it is and you see, oh look, there's a visitor spot. I can drop off that book today or oh i meant to talk to so and so you can pull in but you can escape through the roundabout man once you get back into that corner then you're doing three-way turns and yeah, it's so just a mess turn, yeah. yeah or three-point turns sorry <laughs> so that that's I, I just that that just looks like red flags to me and maybe like this you know maybe we can have a, a protected cross a little lighter mm -hmm a painted crosswalk or something just to uh, enable the, the visitor spots to have somewhere to cross. How many visitor spots do you have designated now? Right now just two. Sure. We've but had they, five. But, but they, yeah, they've been filled with staff that are a little bit bigger mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Or right now, with right. that's with mm -hmm. with schools. Yeah. Children, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And when we started, I think there were just the two, and then there was a drop in enrollment, and I think we lost one classroom, and then there was five, and then it went back up again to two, and then COVID happened, and the uh, Hills Fest spaces went away temporarily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are two um, auctioned parking spaces that the PTA uses as a fundraiser. Mm -hmm. Don't visit that when the Heights gets rebuilt. I, oh, I know. Oh, I know. Yeah, they, yeah, they, <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, they do. Yeah, that can be something we can visit. And so, like, I go right now, the kids kind of just hang out. Um, maybe we're right in front of the office door. Mm -hmm. Would this be something where we we would have, like, multiple hangout zones for, for kids, I think, or they would? It, when does that occur? Well, I'm, I'm thinking two thirty. So, at at pickup. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And maybe that. Or would it still be like they hang out? They all hang out here, and then could they hang out down here and then have like pickup? Yeah. Maybe yeah, they could like, hang like out in, in the shade the and then. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah, the older kids are kind of over here anyway. So then there's like siblings mm -hmm. too. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. yeah. You grab your little sister or something. <laughs> And I bet you a lot of that will happen sort of organically, but I think this is just a colossal improvement over the yeah, yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Seems way safer too. Well, you take out the portables, you can do anything. Yeah. <laughs> bring it, bring it back to how it was originally. With no walls. <laughs> <laughs> well, not originally. Not originally. originally. <laughs> okay. So that's always a possibility, but we would want to look at it. You know, supervision to, oh, yeah. to make mm -hmm. sure staff members are there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to support our children getting in the car and yeah, that's what I'm wondering. safety and all those pieces. Mm -hmm. And that's just a logistics staff yeah. piece. Because there's, like, you could, kids could get, it's blue, so that means they can get in the cars, but are they walking all the way right. alone? Right. No, because right. there's gates, so, right? How, how are they getting in their car? If they're, if they're allowed to get in their car here, are they mm -hmm. coming all the way down? Yeah, and it's, it's not crazy far, right? So it's probably a couple hundred feet or so, but yeah, for a little kid might be, and then they can just kind of, like the airport, they can kind of peel off, a little bad mm -hmm. analogy, but they can sort of peel off into this lane. And no, like, it's, a, it's a good analogy, yeah, actually. Kind of get in close, and then. The white lane is yeah. reloading, and then loading. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're you're no right parking. Right <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Kids show up in Ubers. <laughs> yeah, well, I think that's the future at some point. Um, I mean, yeah, you could have the older kids kind of further east, and then the car keeps going and picks up the little one t closer to the front door of the office. Mm -hmm. So you got like big kid, you know, semi-supervised 
playground time and then like littles get a little bit more closer to the office yeah. front door. You know, and if, if a parent, you know, a big kid parent arrives early and they end up up here, it's, you know, it's okay I think for the kid to mm -hmm. kind of shuffle around a little bit and, and vice versa. I feel like you could, you know, maybe have, this might even replace some of your um, staff principal suite, but if you could come down here and kind of help point and mm -hmm. shuffle the kids around, mm -hmm. that's a huge improvement. So. I guess we we'll had this for our, for our socially distant drive throughs It would have been so great. Got <laughs> <laughs> these islands and stuff. And yeah. Like, oh, man. oh, totally. Like I don't want another pandemic or anything. But uh, no, no, we can still do them though. Oh, really? Boy. Yeah, we'll have to think about they it. Look yeah. forward to being all together. <laughs> yes. No, no. In person. <laughs> yeah. Like that'd be a great stage for the circus. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess part of the question too is, I assume there's going to be some kind of fence. Um, Please keep it black. All the schools that have like that gray fence just look like a prison. I'm so glad this one has it black. It just looks so much nicer. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. That mm -hmm. Just the, it's the same material but black totally changes. Mm -hmm. the world because you tend to see through it and not mm -hmm. your eye doesn't stop at the fence. Mm -hmm. I mean, as, as a result of going to meetings like this, I've actually spray painted my 1971 backyard fence <laughs> black. Ooh. And it has so improved it. Nice. <laughs> So and it's way cheaper than a glass fence. <laughs> but um, so I guess that's part of the question is where are the gates? That's the refinement of this site plan. So if we if we you know getting a nod that we're going in the right direction is hmm. the next thing would be is where do we put the gates and the fences and everything to control mm -hmm. um, security on the campus? Right. Sure. All the lights here, right? Yeah. Well, because, you know, one of the things we have to show, ultimately, we, the state architect has to approve where the gates are in the mm -hmm. fence, because not only do we secure the campus, but in emergency, we need to get, get out, yeah. kids yeah. out okay. as well. Mm -hmm. You need to get out, you need to get in, mm -hmm. you need to have the right balance when you're talking about, mm -hmm. you know, where do the kids congregate. Sure. If you make a place, that's where we'll go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wonder if that question is almost a segue that starts us toward the other activity because it's sort of an aesthetic question yeah, it is. comment, um, and it actually kind of dovetails nicely with the other major activity that, that we had planned. You want me to, unless there are other comments or questions. I, I just have um, a question. Yeah, of course. Um, for is there um, a bus like a small bus for disabled children that pulls up or no? Is there a spot for that? I mean, I like some of these. Um, spots but I think that would determine we would have to determine how big the bus was or car to if they would be able to access through here but we would still have the bus okay turn around here we have to still have that if it's the little and mini that, buses mm -hmm. yeah they will fit in that mm -hmm. and this is a handicap yeah. accessible so there would be uh -huh. a spot where you could do that okay. as the um, yeah. drop off <clears throat> spot and then maybe um, 11 feet so actually there has to be we have to create a Okay. Every hundred feet, we have so roughly every five cars, we would. and that would be our refinement too. Kind of looking at where would that other one go? Is that it's the best kind of? So we'd get one right in there. Yeah, right. yeah. Into there. So the this bus lane actually. So in years past, we've had cones stopping people from driving through there, mm -hmm. and this year and last year we didn't, and we had a lot of newer parents going through there. They're there now. We do okay. have them there. So, okay. so the parents. I didn't mean to interrupt, but we do yeah. have the cones there. Okay, I just, yeah. I, yeah, I think I may have noticed them recently. I haven't yeah. been looking. Mm -hmm. But um, I know that the reason that that has been blocked off was someone was injured, she broke her back, and it was a million dollar settlement. So in the new design, <laughs> uh, can we change that corner to no longer be the way it is and have it be much more functional and maybe instead of being a solid right turn have it you know I, I don't know how much of this is elevation but can we make it a useful escape from the campus so like have the one on the north side so I'm getting left, my left turn lane yeah basically having this one if you're going left you come out this way and if you're going right you go this way just to make that space usable or just get rid of it 
um, if it is a hazard and we can just put boat put buses on the street although that's street parking so that's probably not so good but can we change that to make it much more useful and less hazard hazardous and um, is there anything we can do well, with when, that what space? happens when that field trips hopefully come back and they've got buses there like in the drop off and pick up that might be tough well and and it's not the bus part that i am concerned about it's the you know you're not allowed to be here because some lady broke her back and got a million dollar settlement out of the school district so how do you make that not a liability and make it useful right now is it painted so that on the on the asphalt so you can see that this is the left and I feel bad because I, I just don't drive this. Yeah, so there is some like, you can, see, you can see the stripes here. So like, you know, this I think believe, I believe that there's no parking or buses only or something like that. But it's marked on a, on a concrete. It's a little hard to see in that sign, but there's some, like, some kind of striping there. Yeah, my, my neighbor was here when all of that happened. The, the hard thing about that intersection is it's not quite a three-way intersection. Mm, You've yeah. got the apartment driveway right. immediately. Um, to the south, and you've got the street coming down that doesn't quite align with either one. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, and it's hard to get even a crosswalk for the school for the kids to get across the street. You know, how do you, how do you align it? So not only do we have to deal with that, so that you can see the crosswalk goes across here, but um, you know, if we're bringing kids up this way, how do they cross here or here? To get over to this point is mm -hmm. the, right. so, is yeah, the tough part. So, yeah, so we have cones here so that the children just walk cross behind here it. and we don't have to be concerned about cars car turning, yeah. right? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. a lot of parents do utilize those around right. to park for their And kids. then if yeah. we have cars coming out this way, then we have another crosswalk uh, here, which we have children and families that cross here. So it, we just alleviate that by having our crossing happen here. Well, mm -hmm. could, we, could we move this? over here so we still have like a widened entrance like make this curve like a bubble so that buses can come in and have a place to park but not a separate street do you want to get the marker and do it sure <laughs> I'm going to have the proportions all wonky, but so have this be like, you know, spot. And then this be just that. So you have a, a wider, maybe a, yeah, I don't know. And then why do you have to go right? I don't know. I mean, I I am not the. Because uh, you couldn't have two like two lanes coming out. Mm -hmm. and you you can use you can paint multiple lanes, and then that'll help people get out faster. Maybe a dedicated straight. Um, so dedicated left, dedicated straight, dedicated right. Um, That's the idea. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I do like the idea though of having kind of like a narrow, again, my kids don't walk here that often, but it's kind of a narrow spot so you can really see where the kids are crossing. It's like an acute area, there's only one way the car will go, it's either, you know, so they don't have to worry about a million different directions, but it is an idea of utilizing that better. But here, you know, you can have one crossing guard, one crossing guard, and sort of know where the cars are going to go. But that's yeah. kind of use that better. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, and the state requires a bus turnaround, like a bus parking roundabout, is that right? No. <laughs> would, would they be crossing in the middle? They're not supposed to. <laughs> well, just the, the, the crosswalk would probably be angled yeah. up to the up to there. I'm, and I think I think paint could actually solve a lot of those problems <laughs> to tell people where to go. Would. I mean, this would just have to line up with the. So if we had other side of the street, a straight, a left, and a right, how? 
where are the most cars going? Well, my initial thought is if they're going right, they're probably walking to school because they're in the neighborhood. Okay, right? well, okay. Like yeah. I would turn right and my kids yeah. walk. Uh, but or, I, do, I do know some folks up that live up high, they do like to drive. Or, the, or straight and left are crowded because Mango's a disaster uh, and yeah. you're escaping up the uh, next To go block. all the way around Mango. Yeah, yeah, that's true. This is one of the things yeah, I love exactly. about this place is because you've got three escapes. You've Off got time, toward, yeah. you've got Mango left, you've got up the hill, straight, and you've got right up in the neighborhoods and back out again. The escaping is amazing here. <laughs> Just, well, <laughs> I mean, like I said, like when I went to Heights and I saw that disaster and somebody locked it to, to boot, it was just like, nope. Like, like logistics will make or break your day. So if we, if I'm thinking if we keep this just for buses, mm -hmm. And then, and then, so everybody, parents always go out this way, mm -hmm. straight. Yeah, make it left. skinny, like a bus only. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's really wide right now. It's like two make lanes it. of cars wide. Yeah, because I think there's don't make it inviting. Yeah, yeah. Straight, straight, straight or right. Yeah. There's still the two, mm -hmm. like two options. Like so I don't know. That go straight and right. To get a or, left yeah. and a straight, we probably have to work with the city on the timing of the light to see how that would work. I don't know if we need a dedicated and that would left be the turn. Light right. would be the one down on Mingo, right? At Delmar Heights? Yeah. Okay. Well, no, the main oh, here. We don't, I don't think we have We don't have a light. light. Oh, that's oh, right, it's a stop sign. Yeah. 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 Which so I think then, is still so then, doable. So then the straight, so then you get this. So that makes it easier because this could be a straight and a left. Mm -hmm. Take that mm -hmm. out, and that that's a dead kid, right? Yeah, I can turn. You could yeah, work on a flashing crosswalk for us. Ooh, yeah, those are yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like on that one, that's the state. That's a city. <laughs> We're doing one right now. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We're creating a speed table yeah. at the crosswalk so that yeah. even so we have it's raised. Yeah. Does anything yeah. to change that corner away from what it is now? Yeah, it's because there were so many people like driving through and parking and. And I just, I just know that based on history, that's a really bad idea and it's a high liability. So if we're gonna fix things, we might as well fix a major liability. This is kind of a cute area too that the kids like. So it'd be nice to keep some that you like climb on the little blocks and that kind of thing. Yeah, I've seen a lot of kids playing in there like after school on the weekends. Yeah, yeah. Like, great place to ride a skateboard. <laughs> yeah, a lot of kids like to skate there. But you're right, it's really wide. So probably you can use some of that space. Yeah. And keep our marks well, that's, that's a good thought. Is, you know, do we do we narrow that down or even straighten it out to make it a little bit easier for a bus to get in there? But it's yeah. not. As you're driving out, you don't think that's another way out. It's, you right. know to go straight exactly. to the street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Well, hey, okay, well, keep you, you want to keep standing because we got another one that's oh, sure. it's more fun than this. <laughs> <It's more fun. laughs> I don't know. So, I mean, it's a pretty, it's pretty exciting topic. Years ago, I did a lot of retail and ingress, ingress. My life. <laughs> so this next thing is is visual preferences, um, or sometimes we call it visual listening. And there's two boards: this one and this one in the back. And everybody's going to get three green dots and three red dots. And all we want you to do is the images that sort of, there's something about it that you really like. Um, what we're trying to do is understand what is the feel of Del Mar Hills fitting into the community, um, your interpretation of it, not ours. Um, and, you know, some of them are just material only. You know, hey, I like this material on this picture. Do I like the way these windows look? Um, you know, and then we've got some that are eh, kind of a little hint of what an entry could look like in the building. You know, is it a how to define that the entry of the school? Some of it is, quite frankly, roof material because when you're on Mango, what do you see most of the school? It's the roof. So some of it is that. So there's no right or wrong. Um, it's really just how do you feel about the image and then what we'll do is after everyone gets their six dots distributed um, 
the green ones are, yeah, I really like this one. Reds, no way. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so, uh, hand it out. And then I'll hand out the negatives. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and then we'll maybe report back a little bit on, oh, you got a green one. Report back on what, sort of what your you. thoughts were and why you put the dot in a certain okay. place. Okay, thank you. It's a big responsibility here. It is. Yeah. You don't hear no about the dot. And if yours has a little piece of another dot, it has to be a full dot to count. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Yeah, you get to put it too. Oh, yeah, you don't think you I was always so skilled. So I have a question. Yeah. Um, the weight on the roof was brought up in the HVAC. And I know at the heights they talked about putting the HVAC, taking it off the roof. So when we look at these and you're seeing roof lines, the HVAC was not on the roof. Like some of these won't be possible if you have HVAC on the roof. Or are you still going to do a, a baffle to hide it? Like currently have? It, that, that was, that yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It, well, the problem is it needs to be. We're, yeah, right. we're assuming that that gets redone. But yeah. do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. You were talking yeah. about the seismic issue and the weight. Yeah. And so that's why I'm asking if, the, if that's a possibility that the HDC is not on the roof. It's going yeah. to happen too. It is. Uh, it just then we got something yeah. more ground plane that we need to find room for equipment. But the the thing that really triggers the roof the is, is the weight of the fire suppression. Okay. But we, we came this close to having some sprinklers in our house. Yeah, Dan, Dan said, ask anybody that's done a remodel. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Basically, our, our, our architect was called in to argue that the space where the where the stairs are, no, there's no the floor. Stairs, yeah. There's no floor. Yes. <laughs> and then it's fine. Yes. Yeah, and it's the size of our house, though. It's a tile. It's the same thing. Yeah. So it's really a problem. 
when they're when they're on Zoom and people can participate and Uh, you can make it look like that. All the way around to touch it, you're like, okay, it's a different from the engineering program. It just scatters enough that it lets you know what you're looking at. Separate different work patterns so that, again, if somebody scratches it over the way, or whatever, you can just go in there and paint it on the other way. It looks like a screw. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's like that. 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 Yeah, it's into this playground and at the time the person who brought it up was thinking like school sh school shooter uh, pedophile looking for a particular kid things like that so um, is there anything being thought of to increase either having shade sales over this area especially the lunch tables or any kind of barriers to reduce the view from this area? Yeah, we have a more technical issue there. Okay. So that's good input. It's supposed to be really cool. I've been just looking at some of the hardcore. Yeah. No, I mean, there was a technical the last one, I put it in the late season soon. It's this meeting we did last time. So I don't know if you guys actually got it, but it includes the notes that were taken, the things we talked about, and that one. So what the whole 
as more parents want. Yeah. Like the yeah. It exists on the yeah. Come in. Yeah, feel free to write on <laughs> One of the, um, the board members for SCOE to bring these up to us. There's a lot with that. Well, I'll just grab these two. Yeah. But uh, we, yeah, again, I, we, we did some stuff with uh, the to the people yeah. of the yeah, it was Lego and also it was really cool. Yeah, they just robotics things. It's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, the same one side by side. I've never seen that. I've driven through and I've been through. I'm going to drive through. Okay, okay. What are you sure you're here? Oh, great. Okay, good. 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 Ok
got two here. What does this say? Not. Not wood. Not wood. Okay. And then three here. The color is very warm. So long as it's an actual um, durable material and not wood. Anything else about that? You have good, good windows, and then you have this combination of that warm, like a little bit of um, the metal, like it, it felt like it had some balance. So you didn't a little just, bit of the metal. A little bit of balance of materials, too. In the hard material, yeah, like stone. Yeah. The stone at the bottom, yeah. Yeah, and then. This one got a lot. This had. Well, I like the the canopy. Like, if you were to take the trellis and replace it with solid. Yes. <laughs> like, I like that that the look of that canopy. The rest of it, I don't care for, but I okay. like the canopy. Canopy only. Yeah. Yeah, we had a sheltered canopy and uh, the planted roof line is cool. It looks like it's really well fenestrated. Lots of light to get in there. Um, it's very clearly the entrance. Like, here it is. You know where to go. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And there's like little benches to sit and that kind of thing. I mean, those are all details to be settled later, but. The only thing I don't like is it's, when you look at the, the scale where the people are, mm -hmm. it's flipping huge. It's, it's, it's very it's imposing. It's too grand. It's too grand. It, <laughs> it needs to be, You're right. when you like to keep, keep the same, yeah. um, per, the proportions that we have here, because this is a very warm, very well, very welcoming building. And really, there's not a whole lot that it needs other than to be newer. Yeah, we're obviously a much smaller scale. Right. Yeah. Than what that is. So I actually liked the materials of that. Yeah. I liked the stone at the bottom top. Um, I liked the warmth and the earthy tones there. I will say, does it remind you a little of Petco with the white steel? <laughs> Isn't it? It's kind of fun and cool, and, 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 and uh, it's neat. It's, it's yeah. big, heavy steel, but it doesn't seem that way. It's got that lighter, I don't know if you powder coated or how you describe it, but it looks kind of cool and, and airy, even though it's a little bit massive. That's good. But, but that's kind of what struck me. It's like, oh, it's very, it's kind of sandy, it's beachy, it's very yeah, exactly. And it's very, we are very much a beach. Yes. Yes. But I like the colors and the. He has a book like the gray and blue, which everyone kind of jumped on up there. <laughs> it's a little lighter, sandier, beachier. Well, what if if you so the part on that one I don't like is the the material in the middle. I agree. I like the stone on the bottom, but if you took say a more wood tone porcelain tile, for example, and you put like the the tile from that top one that we like, and you kind of moved it down to give it a little bit more glow, because mm -hmm. I think that that brick is very, the middle brick is very institutional mm -hmm. versus a little more warmth mm -hmm. would, would so kind of- a little bit that. too brown? It, it's just dull. Or too, or too monochromatic. It's, uh, it's, it's the just, same It's very tone. industrial. Mm -hmm. It's the it's same just, tone throughout. There's no distinction. Uh, it's just not warm. It's not comfy. It's brick. Okay. <laughs> it's too brick. So like you're hot, you're cold, <laughs> and then if you have too much shade, you're cold, and you're if you have your kids out there working, they might get really cold. But then I and we don't get rain that often. So sometimes it's nice to have a, like a shade structure that is does let in the light from above, um, and then maybe keep it, keep it a little warmer. Or maybe um, like vary it. Like there's a a tile of this is solid and then a, a, vent, a ventilated yeah. open and then kind of mock like vary it yeah. maybe yeah. 
I would just love this to be part of our ease by the entrance to the classroom to be solid so that and the kids can hang out when it does rain. It's so infrequent, but, yeah. you know, so that the poor teachers can have those extra 10 minutes and don't have to be dragging the backpack things in there. Oh, backpack hooks. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm wishing for things. <laughs> the, the, the rows of backpack hooks would just be lovely if, again, so these teachers don't have to be, you know, hauling uh, saw horses in and out of their classrooms daily. So maybe, like, this solid piece is shading maybe where the kids are walking, but this is more of an accent piece that just provides some interest and some shade and shadow. I think it depends on where saying. it is. Like yeah. if it's near a door, it should be solid. Right. And if there's some yeah. like walkways, it can be ventilated. And then by the next door, it'll be solid. Yeah, and the slots we have now, they're just perfect. That ranger all over the kids and they're the exact separate, separate bits apart that the traps for playground balls. So yeah, where playground balls go to die, and our kids get no shelter. So if we could just repair them. Yeah, we, we, we see one out here. Yeah. I've come down here to like poke them out with a broom on the weekends yeah. and stuff. And so. Yeah, that, that is actually a little bit convenient. It's like you know there's going to be a ball here. It's just how much work are you going to have to do <laughs> to, get to get it out. Okay. Um, this is a good one. You got a green and two reds. Oh, I was probably an outlier. That one was purely me blowing uh, by proxy for my kids. So that, that okay. Be just, uh, this is the kids, pre kids that. preference. That, I feel like that might be the kids' choice award. This is red. Look at that. Like you know, but I, I could see how a normal you know. It looks like adult a taste. It's, it's a fire station. <laughs> but I'm super cool. Let's blow the fire trucks. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this, it's got lots of brightness windows. It's you know a little maybe a little bit linear and stamped across the top, but uh, bright colorful as trees. But again, that's uh, that's me um, trying to interpret what my kids would pick. Well, and I think that the kids should have windows to put stuff on, and there should be kid art everywhere and things like that. But the building itself should be boring. So if you go in there in the summer, it's a warm, inviting, but brown, <laughs> like boring, because the kids give it life when they're here. Yeah. Yeah, just not, not red. <laughs> <laughs> no, and this one and this one got there are two reds on this one. I, I don't I don't think I put a red on. I don't, I don't know, but it's just looking at it right now, the windows that that looks like a jail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the small windows. Yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah. Too small. Reminds me of a fort when I was a kid in Maine there was this fort we go to and had the little slits where you kind of uh, shoot arrows <laughs> 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 yeah. how thin those windows are for the, the, the side of it oh, these are good comments um, this image got two greens on that board and this one got two greens on this board or three greens on this one so what was it about this one that Part of it, on the, the Del Mar City Hall, part of it is having been in that building and the whole thing is a giant Tory Pine. It's all very environmental, very natural, very like well designed and put together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's such blends into the surroundings really nicely. It's a great, it's a great building. It's great to use. It's yeah. neat it's that the roof kind of does overhang and provide some shade. And they have trellises over in other parts. My kids have taken, you know, ice creams and lunches there just to hang out. It's a, it's a neat building, especially for a city hall, another institutional type building, but it really kind of reflects the neighborhood. Yeah. You know, like Kim was saying, it's got Tories and like decomposed granite that's kind of beach adjacent and all this stuff. But it's pretty cool. And yeah. It's nice to have the windows up at the top of the, the roof there. Here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that lets in a lot of light. But at the same time, it's not giant. Yeah, it's not just long. a little yeah. bit of a lip. And it's just not enough. a skylight. It's, it's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. Somebody had commented, there was somebody said one on right on the roof. Was it the roof that was yeah. the reason? The roof itself is really nice. And I think. Anything else? There's a lot of, of craftsman architecture in that building. Yeah. And that is a very warm and welcoming 
style in general, and it's a very timeless one. So you, you'll, people will be building and remodeling into Craftsman like forever, and it's a hundred year old style and it still looks modern. What about this one? Long and It's just materials, the glass with the warm kind of wood, and uh, that just kind of seemed like the materials fit together too. It, it, it lean towards those, but sometimes they don't fit together nicely. And so they, I think the, the dark, uh, uh, I don't know that it honestly totally fits this school even. It just kind of resonated with me. <clears throat> yeah, it needs a little more warmth. That, the, mm -hmm. that one's a little on the dark uh, okay. side for a school. But I, I get what you see. What you see. It kind of felt entrancey too, because it's sort of one where you're going to have a lot of glass. It's a little bit less of, um, oh, there was a red dot on this one. But was it was it something about the materials or uh, should we have taken the picture the on a sunny I feel, day? I feel terrible putting those off on any of these. I mean, these kids are going to do great whether they're in a tent or a portable. I mean, we have such a good teacher. It's like my kid doesn't care about the temperature of the color of the tile. You know, and I feel bad putting those off on any of these because uh, I think they'll all they'll be such a you know a nice enhancement to the school. But you know, if, if we've got some money to spend and input to give, then yeah, let's uh, let's get it right. Well, so I think that was just a little gray and, and dark. Yeah, but it, it's at the same time it has to fit. Yeah, yeah. And it has to you. You, you get your very first impression from that corner where you're about to turn in and go, oh, that's really cute and happy and warm and okay. And if you're nervous as a kid, you know, seeing what looks like a pretty nice place and it's not imposing and I have bricks and I have cinder blocks, you know, like, you know, think of a kindergartner. They don't want to go to jail. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That's why I didn't really care for that one. Great, Speaking right. of jail, I heard that comment on this picture a couple of times too. Is that still valid? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. And the. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but there's a ball to stop you from ramming to let you to do a jailbreak. Yeah. We fashion the car into the building, right? <laughs> oh. No, I love these comments. This is great. Um, Anything else? Because some of the things we put up here that are more horizontal and some are more vertical. And to see if that, but it, that didn't really trigger anybody. So that's that's a good thing. We still have some things we can play with, Dan. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to hear about the angles that people were looking at it from, what it looks like when they come down into it. Um, what the feel overall feel is is and have I heard a lot of talk about warmth and not some natural things as well as a lot of talk about the roof line mm -hmm. um, particularly um, that one oh, really? kind of, yeah so anyway I just that was the interesting one the one. yeah Look, and the really one at the bottom it oh here yes. yeah. 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 that was pretty cool yeah. that's true yeah. Yeah. those are all Really interesting yeah. to think about when we think about yeah, for, for solar array, you know, we did solar roof lines might make sense and position to the southwest, so that would be great. Well, solar can be made any way. Yeah. Whatever angle it needs to be, the, the wrapping, you can do it. That'll take care of it. So you don't have to you don't have to do your roof ah, to do solar. Like you can solar separate. Yeah, fortunately our roof slopes, we've got some options on I mean, because there's been a, uh, there's already been a study done on how to put PV on the roofs. Okay. So, yeah. I, I, I don't know all of these buildings. I, I happen to see this one. You're not going to guess where it is. Uh, is, is it an elementary school? I just take it because it's a high school. Where is it? Sandy, Oregon. Oh, interesting. It's like the. The biggest newest thing in Sandy. Huh? My, my mom used to live there, and I remember when the school was being built. And I went over and looked at it. I went, "Oh my gosh, this thing's enormous for this little town." 
Huh. And, then it, and then it starts showing up in magazines and things. So, wow. But it's interesting, your comments was, it's kind of beachy, it's kind of sandy, and I'm just sitting here thinking to myself, that's, that's where it is. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's interesting here. I mean, here's your typical Oregon sky, you know, gray. And so they have a lot of windows there that they don't have to worry about dealing with a lot of direct sunlight coming in, things like we do here in Southern California. So it's a little bit. But that's a really good point, though. Whatever we do with the overhangs, in order to not make it dark and right. capitalize on the light and the windows and all of that. And that's such a good point, the natural light. Because we wouldn't want the overhangs to <laughs> To, to create, make it dark, right? to make it's it like dark. Even a, like put, we, the, if we could put a window in the exactly. exterior yeah. wall, and then we have a big overhang. Mm -hmm. Right, like the light yeah. and, the more, like, you know, and a couple of them had um, the windows even above, like the one that a lot of people liked. Um, this one right here. Um, like you know, there's extra windows up here and things. Oh, yeah, the clear like, story. Yeah. Yeah. Those were things that I could, people were talking about that added yeah. to that. That's one of the things that we're looking at is, is doing what we the solar tubes, mm -hmm. but the the big 22 inch solar tubes. So in the roof, and that brings a lot of daylighting into the space. But with the windows, you get the view as well, and that's some people value that more as much more than the natural day. Because if you're up on the roof, changing all that stuff, could we just pop up the roof here again? <laughs> Well, I mean, you're, you're basically going to have to have tear a, off. We do have a budget. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, as part of the, the seismic, you're probably just going to have to take the entire roof off. We're, 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 what, we, what we'd like to do is, because there's a lot of stuff that is going to take money that mm -hmm. people won't see. Mm -hmm. And so if we're going to be spending money in areas that people won't see, we it's like, well, is it important that people see them? Maybe. I mean, we'll get into that a little bit. I mean, the, the wood that's in that building, you can't purchase today. Mm -hmm. You can't build today, and yet it's all hidden. Mm -hmm. And it's all inside, and it's all protected. So what happens if we, you know, reveal that? And that's part of what, you know, we talk about next steps and, and things like that. You know, maybe soul tubes is one thing. You know, the city hall, right there, that Claire story, it's, they have one of those in the council chamber. So when you're sitting there, it's not that it's just bringing light in, but you can see the sky out. Mm -hmm. So if you're in the school, if, if that's something you do, is it, are you able to look out anywhere? And if you are, then that's a benefit. Mm -hmm. And then we say, okay, yes, it's worth it. If you're looking out at the backside of a, a canopy unit, and it's there because it makes the roof look pretty, but it doesn't really give you the benefit, then maybe it's the solar tubes because we can spend better money somewhere else. Yeah. Well, and it's a school, it's, it's so that. I got yelled at all the time for looking out the window. <laughs> so <laughs> really, like, like do we really want a whole bunch of beautiful view, or do we want them actually paying attention to what's going on? Well, and some of it's what are you looking at versus the ability to see out. Mm -hmm. It's like I sit next to the window in an airplane, not because I like watching the world go by, it's because I hate sitting in the middle of a tube. Mm -hmm. Just knowing there's something out there is comforting. Mm -hmm. And Dan sits by the window in our office and has to wear a hat in the afternoon because of the sun. So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can kind of lean behind a column and do some shadows. Uh -huh. um, so the next step, so Chris mentioned the classroom counts. I can talk just a little bit. So one of the things when we look at the classroom counts in the permanent building right now um, versus we looked at 2019-20, um, which was you know prior to um, COVID and prior to having Delmar Heights on campus. And at that time, you know, we had two kindergarten, uh, I think we had a compo, but I just kind of put it at 12, first through six, which would be two each, first through sixth grade. We didn't have any of our after school programs in there. Uh, we had three spaces for art, science, and music. Uh, music was in a portable, art and science really had three classrooms that um, took up because of the science innovation space that you have there. The innovation center had another two. We uh, had an empty classroom. We had a PE storage room that was really mostly storage. Uh, we had a staff meeting room. So we had three rooms that were really being used for um, storage, staff meeting, things that could potentially be done in another way uh, in the school. Um, we didn't have a server. Uh, when we're looking at this, we're kind of looking at uh, 
you know, the learning center. Um, so really where you see difference, our after school program, we're looking at having a classroom for after school program in here. And then we have this big innovation center space, um, which is really actually pretty conducive to an after school program. In fact, prior to COVID, we had our before school where we'd have kids in there and they'd be using it. And it was actually a very vibrant um, experience when you come in uh, in the morning. And so uh, we kind of are looking at how could you use that as a space that is then used after school and kind of combines. So you have an after school, have their kind of home base, and then also have that. Um, not having any empty classrooms, uh, bringing PE in and then being able to have PE situated in a manner. Um, you know, there's some talk when teachers kind of stop by and we're kind of talking a little bit about, you know, getting things out to the blacktop or getting things down to the field. So situating PE in a, in a, in a classroom that would be close enough so that it is easily accessible to the blacktop, easily accessible to the field, and also gives your PE teacher a space to do a combination of storage and work. Uh, not having a staff meeting room and instead using the Innovation Center, using the PAC, things like that. Uh, and then the survey would take some space, but it'd be smaller. Uh, and we'd be re kind of invigorating the K area because we don't have restrooms and adding restrooms and moving some of those pieces. And then we're looking at, um, I know that we want to use this for learning and for, for plays and other things, but we have space and storage behind here that really isn't used. You have like changing rooms and other things. So there's kind of the consideration, could we potentially put there's a lot of room back there. Could you actually have a music classroom that could then open up and be used for some of those things that you use when you have a play, but then you don't have this kind of a wasted space that is really, in a lot of cases, just stored. So we kind of are looking at ways that that actually has about a 900,000 square feet that you can kind of turn into its classroom at the right time, and then it's actually usable for supporting your place. So we kind of, in looking at that, we were kind of looking at, yes, we would be removing portables, but um, that year, prior to COVID, we had uh, the, the, tech, the two tech rooms, so they weren't being used. We had two ASP rooms, we've been able to deal with that. We had a music room, we've been able to deal with that. And so then I know that the PTA room, we'd, we'd have to work with on how do we find space when PTA wants to meet, we'd have the PAC. So we'd be able to kind of think of ways that we could do that in low-income storage. And so we did really kind of consider how could we, and could we do this in a manner that doesn't lose program for you? Um, and it still is in a way where you have some flexibility because you do have a little bit of flexibility. PE, for example, is in a full classroom. If you have a bubble and you need some flexibility, we can think about, like we do at other sites, maybe PE is you know, kind of being flexible and where they go at it. So it gives you a little bit of flexibility because you have other classrooms that also could be used in the event of we have a little bit of an increase in enrollment. So uh, it does pencil out when we start looking at what we had beforehand and empty spaces that we had in the permanent room kind of comparing. And so that, that's kind of where we, we are right now. Uh, we still have some more work to do in getting input from the staff because I think that's uh, uh, really the critical piece is looking at our, our teaching staff and how, um, how, how it fits for them and then how we outfit and kind of work with, with those spaces. Yeah. Have to be the, the, the new TK advocate here. Um, if, you know, Five years from now, ten years from now, we have to have TK. Um, would they be space here for that? There, that may require adding something. If you're looking at two more classrooms. Um, there's a lot of conversation right now statewide um, with, you know, how much um, district wide in a district, just generally, mm -hmm. how much. Um, you know, desire is there, would there be, and therefore would it be that you have it at every school site, some districts are doing it where you have it at say half the school sites, and then because you, you can then fill, so we, I think, have to do some space allocation kind of study on it, and then there is a still a pretty large blacktop, so there is the potential if we needed space to look at, do you add something on the blacktop kind of in this area right here is likely where you, you'd look at. This was sort of our first pass at what the innovation center could be. And Dan talked about having all this wood and everything that's up there that nobody can see. So the thought was if we could open that up, and this is the thinking right now, um, open that up and create more of a, a big volume, even if, you know, reconfiguration, it, it might, the, you know, walls might, I guess, encroach into the space that we have now, but the volume of the space is uh, makes it feel much much bigger, and then you know the this configuration came off of the reconfiguration of the admin and opening up that front desk and seeing through into 
more into the innovation center from from the, as you first walk in the front door. Mm -hmm. You don't get a whole view of it, but you get a pretty good shot of more than you get now. So that's where we are. Can I just say too, there there is uh, definitely some necessary reconfiguration of that admin space too to make it more usable for our, our administrative staff. So that's part of it too, where this then swings in. I mean, the conference room for anybody who's been in the conference room is not very sizable, so how do we make that a little bit more useful? And you can almost hear into the principal's office. So there's some of those pieces that we, we kind of, and then that plays into um, some of this work with Innovation Center as well. I guess the biggest thing that I see initially from this is noise. When this school was built, it was a very open plan and everybody's just gonna be all like, huggy, huggy, whatever. And then they realized the children are loud. So are you going to have baffles like hanging from the ceiling? I mean, I see lights, yeah. but like acoustic tiles or something, because so I can be see, I see noise. <laughs> it'll be acoustic material up between the beams. And then there will be, we'll look at it for acoustic clouds and the things that need to happen within the space as well. It's sort of, you know, animated a little bit too, but help with acoustics. And the principals are the solar team you referenced earlier? Yeah, these are the big, oh, very cool. big guys coming in. Yeah. Um, another thing is the, the current walls are modular. So for example, when, I um, can't remember what, I think there were two kindergartens when my oldest started and they had the walls configured. Like when we visited in the spring, the walls were configured one way. And then by the time the fall came, like they had taken out a wall and like had two more open spaces. Are we going to keep that kind of flexibility? Well, I don't know if we're there yet on that. I mean, we're thinking that, that because of what we want to do, we're looking at, you know, we have basically two classes for each grade is to create some collaboration more between the two classrooms as opposed to going into the little octagon to have that happen. So one of the things to do that would be to have you know sort of a folding glass wall on a portion of the wall that's common to the two grades so that leads us to be it would have to be a framed wall we couldn't do a modular wall with something like that in it so that's our thinking right now the modular walls also tend to be very finicky in terms of being able to acoustically separate, separate. there's a couple of, there's a classroom where yes in the, the remote virtual student visitation we had one classroom ask the question through the other classrooms tv yeah <laughs> <laughs> we actually heard the question from yeah <laughs> i mean it was, it was just for fun but you know in, in our walks around we we had to understand that and it can find in the plans i mean there was a there was a reason for it at the time um but i i think right after it was put in everybody realized that maybe that reason wasn't the greatest justification yeah. for it <laughs> Yeah, but you're right, teaching modalities change and things like that all the time, so. Yeah, mostly I'm just thinking like right now we're in a phase of declining enrollment and we still don't know what's gonna happen across the way. So are we permanently going down to a limit of 280 students? Because if you're, if you're taking all the classrooms and you're saying, okay, this prep space, no, that's being used for this. And this other prep space, that's being used for that. And all of a sudden everything's full and you can't use the pack because it's full. Um, let's, let's say something changes and you need to actually go all the way up to 360 as it was originally designed. So, you know, cause it's the smallest school in the district at 280. And if you physically limit the capacity to that, I mean, you guys have tried to close this place twice. And this physically limiting it so that you can't bring it closer to 300 or 350 and you can't make that work. Um, I'm, I'm having a hard time seeing other schools being okay with this for starters. Like, it, it's a it's very limiting to what this this place can do and if you're planning on renting it out as a conference center it looks beautiful but if you're planning on keeping it as a school um, i have serious doubts about its viability limited to 280. 
can tell you that the uh, when we look at the size based on this site and the heights, it's really based on the uh, enrollment projections we have. And historically, over the last you know five to six years, that's sort of been the direction that this site's been. So when we look at looking ahead, we don't see anything in projections looking at birth rate data and other things that would would point us to there's going to be a dramatic increase if we come. 15 years down the road, 10 years down the road, where it's beyond what we're projecting, the size of the school doesn't preclude us from saying, or TK, for example, is something that is a, a requirement or a, a district initiative or what have you that, that is done at every school site. Um, we do have the size and the space where you could look at adding um, some classrooms to it. At this point, though, the, this school was not actually built for that large, and we've added portables. Um, six portables were added to it to increase the size of it over the original case. And then we don't really need that size at this point in time. So those portables are past their, their useful life. Mm -hmm. um, to replace them when there isn't really a demographic forecast that shows a need, it just seems, um, no, I understand. This place was not built with portables. Right. This, I've seen the plans for this school. It was designed for 360 kids. There was like 358 or something like that. So please don't tell me that by getting rid of portables, we're bringing it down to 280. I mean, I've well, probably done more of, research on is, this than you have. Part of that is programmatic as well. And so by having the, some of the STEAM programs and other allocations, after school program, other things, as I said earlier, we, we have been programming all of our school sites to include STEAM plus, after school programs, um, special ed programs that have been a Part of the facility master plan and part of the um, the direction we've gone in, in our planning from board and staff, uh, we certainly have space where, as I said earlier, um, a PE room or an after school program room. There are other things that could be, uh, you know, reused or, or moved into a um, a classroom use as well. So again, there that doesn't preclude us from going in a direction. I'm just saying that we don't have a projection that would say that we are going to need 360 seats at the school. Um, and the combined usage on the west side is, is not going to be that high. So, you know, we're trying to make sure that we make a decision based on the data. Okay, thank you. Um, the last thing we have for you, so as mentioned, upcoming meetings. So, um, another community meeting, so sort of more on the interior, see what that look like and what we're proposing for the, the envelope as well. So that's targeting mid-October, we're working on a date right now to finalize that and with the ultimate goal of getting to the board for a presentation at their October 27th meeting. So it's coming up fast. I can't believe it's almost Halloween. <laughs> and thank you. I appreciate that you came and you spent almost two hours with us and just the conversation and spending the time to really think through ideas, it, it is invaluable because um, you know, we only come with so many ideas and we don't live the space um, as you do every day. And so we appreciate you all coming and spending the time. Um, as I said, we're working the sleep and we'll be working with the teachers to go more specifically into the program and the classrooms because we want them to be the ones that help to drive that classroom area. And then we'll be coming back and, and um, hopefully having a date to you very soon. And we'll send it out to you and to everybody else who's signed up. Uh, and then we'll send it out more broadly as well so that uh, we can keep everybody involved. So thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you. Guys. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Thank you. Will we be able to share this, like these ideas on online for people to look at? Yeah, so we can, um, I'll get the updated presentation and we can post that so that people could, could take okay. a look. And, and we'll send um, that out. We'll even send it out to the people who uh, expressed interest who are um, on the list. And uh, you know, I'll have a way, whether it's through our facilities email or a Google form to kind of focus on the things that we gave input on, let people give a little bit of input that way as well. Yeah, we can virtually stick their dots. That exactly. Cool. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. and, and I, just... I have had parents that have sent me and Chris some information to you to provide that input if they couldn't come to the meeting. So, yeah. Do you want us to leave you a set of boards? I think this presentation, I mean, I'd be happy if you'd like some here, but I think that to me, the, the greater reach is if I can put it on something and post it and then say, yeah, and then say, no. okay, like, so, well, thank you so much. Great. 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 Thank, oh, you're you. thank you for coming. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you.
Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah.